now I'm gonna cut out the carpet area. Um, it's supposed to be an area of about 80, 86 by, on the x-axis by 90 on the y-axis and I'm leaving three inches of overlap on each side. I'm gonna cut it down from there obviously there's some corners that I need to work around and stuff but I figured the easiest way to do that without a, a chalk like a, a rope chalk um, is to use a full length. I had just this little piece of four by eight sheet of plywood left over from a previous cut and I just measured I put a notch for the 96 and then the, the 90, I'm sorry, the 92 and then the 94 mark, uh, which is a only a difference of two inches, so it's really not going to matter. But on, on top of that, I went ahead and I'm cutting uh, about a half an inch to an inch over on each side. I'm squaring it off with another previously uh, cut piece of plywood, which just gives me that exact 90 degree angle. So instead of using a T-square that's only, you know, seven or eight inches long, which is not gonna be terribly accurate on a, on a long area like this. Um, taking that, uh, it's probably 15 inches deep by the, the full width, so 48 inches deep. So that'll give me a nice straight edge to go by. So I'm gonna mark it off with this permanent black marker and then I'm gonna put a, an arrow for like the 96 direction in the 94 direction so that when I lay it down, I know the long end about it let's get to it unfortunately the only place that I have to do this is on the driveway which is really really dirty so once I get it in there and tack down and everything I'm gonna have to vacuum it again I'm actually gonna vacuum it one more time before I even roll it up so all the grit from one side doesn't end up all over the place fun fun So putting in the carpet wasn't that difficult. First thing I did was to ratchet up the legs of the couch and keep it up off the floor. I decided against using any carpet padding, even though I had plenty available. Time will tell whether or not that was a good decision. I'll be insulating the undercarriage in a later video, and I can always lift up the carpet and put in the padding later. This time around, it was all about spacing out the area and getting as much done while the sun is shining. That looks so awesome. It's going to be so nice to have carpet back here. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I think I might leave the lip and just tack it in instead of, I mean, I really don't want to screw down into the floor. Though that's really not the biggest concern, but actually will end out better and will hold it tighter to the outer wall. Let's see what happens.
So one thing that I'm finding is that if you know that you're cutting off a square area, which is what I'm doing here, I'm cutting it all along this wall and then kind of trying to keep it straight here, but we'll see, how, what, see what happens there. And you know that that's gonna be lost. You're gonna lose a square here and you're gonna lose a square there. Uh, the best thing to do is cut a 45 degree angle along or in between both of those right angles, uh, which then will allow you to wrap it around and then cut it accordingly. In the case here, I'm actually gonna build a one and a half inch platform based on flat two by fours and two by sixes to hold the, the, the basin for the shower, which is right on the other side of this wall. So I'm not gonna use any of the area around the corner, so to speak, in this. I'm just gonna basically go straight. And obviously this corner along this wall here is gonna be straight. So I'm just gonna cut a 45, and then I'm gonna uh, have to make another cut to fit that that edge and then obviously this one, but at least it'll wrap around and, and, and lay flat. So it will give me opportunities to do that. Obviously you wanna make sure that you don't cut into the part below it. So you'll wanna hold it out with your hand where the initial cut is and then drive the razor into that area. And if you have to, for safety, you can just use scissors to get it down to the area that you want cut. And that's about where I want cut. Then you can make some more finite cuts as the time goes on. Now, one of the things that I did was I made sure that the lining of the base of the carpet was adjacent, perpendicular, and parallel to the, to the, the square angles inside the bus. So one set of lines goes along this way, one set of li lines goes perpendicular to that, and so what I'll do is I can use this as my grid to cut so that I don't stray. If I'm looking at it like this, it's kind of a weird angle. So uh, to keep it, to keep my cut straight, I made sure that I laid the carpet in an X, Y axis along the same direction as the rest of the panels inside the, the back room here. nice and snug all along this area all along that area I'm gonna this is where the board's gonna be tacked in so I'm gonna wait to cut that down this along, along this side but this is nice and straight I got all this stuff that I need to vacuum out and get all these little strands cut off in here but other than that got a pretty quick carpet laying job here all these little extra Fluffy has got to go, but we'll get to that later, I suppose. So a pretty quick job on the carpet back here. I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. Uh, really, really easy. You just lay it down, uh, fold it where it needs to be cut, turn it back over. You see where the, the grid lines are, cut along those. Uh, for, for very exact cuts, use scissors for kind of broad stroke cuts that uh, allow you to do like the minimizing later. Use your, use your box cutter or an exacto knife or something. Cutting along the edges is a little tricky. You know you have only one shot to get it right. Risking a bad cut, that means you'll have to replace the entire area. On the other hand, it's pretty obvious where you should cut. It's just a little nerve-wracking thinking that you might slip and cut a giant hole in the area that you'll want to be walking on. In this case, I was able to cut several slivers off at a time. 
each one a little closer to my goal angle. This took a lot of the pressure off to make a precise cut the first time. That's the route I recommend going if you're new to the carpet business. The edges are really the trickiest part. You'll think that you need to make a cut inward when it's really outward, or left when it's really right. This is because when you fold the carpet back, what you're looking at is the inverted angle that you need to cut. It's effectively an upside down viewpoint of your original grid. Be careful when you're cutting the edges, especially if there are multiple edges, which there might be if you're making a custom built tiny house. So as you can kind of see, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a fit in there. Over time, as it's walked on, and in this case, crawled on, I guess, it will flatten, spread to the outsides and things like that. There are tools that you can hook up to your knees that have little, um, have little spikes that go down and then the, you hold it down and hit it with your knee and it spreads it all the way to the edge, but uh, I don't. I mean, I've got access to that tool, but <clears throat> there's no point. Um, this thing's gonna be bracketed down in several places with just the stuff I'm building and the desk is gonna hold it down like um, that. And like, there's not even that much square space back here. It's eight by eight. So 64 square feet, not even that actually, because I've cut out sections of it. But anyway, it's good enough. I think that this job's good enough. It goes all the way up to the, the door wedge here fits up to the frame on all the other sides. As soon as I drop the couch, then I'll have all that area uh, pressed down upon by the studs holding that together. So all in all, I think I'm all right. If I come up with problems, I'll just fix it as I go. I suppose I gave up on the idea of having a lip and then and, and putting it in with a baseboard, largely because it would create a gap of potentially up to about a half an inch and I can't have that gap given what I'm building for the desk itself. So I figured I'd cut it all along the base and, and just make sure it's nice and set in. I will be tacking it in a couple different places with a washer and a screw just to make sure it's taut. But other than that, I think it'll be held in place pretty well. All right, so it's time to put the desk in. I have put one block, a 30 foot block against the wall at 29 inches up from the base of the bus, from the floor of the bus. And I've got two 29 inch legs on the desktop portion. I've also got, actually this, the desktop's actually gonna be 59 and three quarters. So it's not quite 60 inches. Um, so the brace board for the center between the posts is 56 and three quarters, compensating for the inch and a half on each side for the two by four. So hopefully it just fits right in nice and snug. And then I'm gonna put one supporting two by four on either side, which will be the exact distance from this wall and this wall. This wall is actually uh, two inches because it's got a half inch spacer uh, to make sure the bed doesn't uh, go over too far in any one direction. So, and I measured out this board, the whole back area is, uh, like I said, 59, and three quarters inches between this post behind the shower wall and this post in the very back, uh, which is very opportune because three inches shy of 59 and three quarters is 56 and three quarters. And I've got a trunk that's gonna fit in, in the area where my legs are gonna be. So I'll fold up the chair and then put it on top of that trunk, which when I'm not using it, just strap it down with a bungee. And then on either side of that, I'm gonna have the height of the desk is 29 inches with a three and a half inch drop for the, the front support, giving um, more than the 21 inches required to put two of the, of the milk crates stacked in that I'm gonna use as, as drawers. Instead of actual drawers that move, I'm gonna put enough, just enough space in between the bottom of the desk support and the top of the egg crates so that they, even if they do rock, they'll just you know butt up against that thing. They, they're not gonna budge on this carpet. So it's gonna be a nice fit. I don't have to put any extra weight in there. The only weight going into the back 
for the desk portion is the, uh, the, the wood for the desk, the two by fours, and the three quarter inch plywood, which is 59 and three quarters inches long by 16 and a half deep, bolts right to the wall. So this support, these two legs and the supports that go behind them, and that's it. That's the only weight that's going back here, trying to remain weight conscious at this point in the build. And I think I've kept it pretty light. So here we go. And that is my work desk. The laptop is gonna sit roughly here. My second screen is gonna sit here. I've got a, a bay of four hard drives that's gonna sit over on this left. And some other, whatever I need over here, probably. My uh, mixing board, audio recorders, and everything like that. If I don't have space on the desktop, the best thing about having a roof with wood on it is that as it ascends and descends, it can, I can just mount stuff to that. Like my audio recorder, it can just be mounted up here and then screwed into place and taken out when I needed to take it with me. Uh, potentially, I could even do my mixing board that way, except I would want my, my mixing board probably flat against the wall. I might mount it like that later. It'll be a very easy, like, tucked away kind of thing. And it would fit in between this space, too. So, lots of really cool benefits there. So, I'm going to screw this down into place, bring my egg crates in and see if they stack like this and bring my uh, my larger wooden uh, uh, case in and see if that fits as well and go from there. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. If so, be sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Construction on the tiny home is actually complete. So visit kyleodonnell.com slash blog to binge watch the build. You'll not only read my personal journals during construction, you'll also see videos covering everything from solar installation and transforming bedrooms to wiring your electronics and off-grid plumbing.